This is our cabin in the woods. We paid 50,000 Canadian dollars for 15 acres and a rundown cabin. We've now been living here for three years. Building everything ourselves with no experience. In this video, we're giving you a full tour of everything we've built, how you can find land like this, and why we chose to live here. We're fully off-grid out here in the Canadian wilderness and we get our electricity from the sun. Behind me, we have two solar arrays. Which equal 10.8 kilowatts of power. That is a lot. Why do we have so much? Well, it's so that we can run our entire lives. Think everything in your house. Lights, fridge, washing machine, dryer, heat pump. There are 12 solar panels on each pole mount. They are 445 watts each, which gives us 10.8 kilowatts as we wire them in parallel and series, which doubles your amperage and your voltage. After two years living here, we officially turned the power on. This was one of the most memorable moments on our journey here. So if you hit that, this will tell you it's working. Whoa! It's running off the batteries! Are you serious? I'm serious! You have That's power! Crazy! We have power! The switch on the wall there beside you. Yeah! There you go. Oh! Right. How's that feel? I don't have words. After a lot of planning, trenching, wiring, and constructing of the solar foundations, installing our electrical system, we celebrated what it means to generate our own off grid power. You can't see it, but directly below me are our electrical lines, which run from our solar array to where we're going next. This building. All of the energy we collect from the sun is stored in these batteries. We frame this four by eight room in this outbuilding to store our batteries and all the components that make up our off-grid system. This is because in Canada, it is illegal to store your batteries in your dwelling for safety. We have 24 lithium battleborn batteries that are 100 amp hours each. They are wired in parallel and series. This will double our amperage and our voltage as we learned on the solar, which gives us a total of 28,000 amp hours. We have two 5,000 watt Victron inverters, which are wired together, which give us 10,000 kilowatts of inverting power, which is your typical 120 plug, what your fridge is plugged into, or any household appliance. We've also wired them, so they are able to produce 240 watts, and that's important, it's how we get water from our well. This system has changed our lives. I love it so much. It is my pride and joy. We've now been using it for a year in all four seasons in Canada and it has never let us down. Our batteries are always charging, giving us power, and I couldn't live without it. As Jazz said, with electricity came water. Both of those things are the best feeling to wake up to every single day. It truly never gets old. And not just that, but having electricity and water out here really allowed us to progress our build. Because the truth is, you can't do much without either of those things. You can't really see it, but this is our drilled well. And what I mean by you can't really see it is because this was one of our biggest purchases and one of the things that brought us the most peace of mind while living out here. And 90% of the drilled well is below the surface of the earth. So this little blue cap, we love her. I love the well. The coolest thing ever was watching this well get drilled. I will never forget that experience. It was super, super fun. This thing is 250 plus feet in the ground. There is a website in Canada at least, and I'm sure there's one near you, where you can Google your neighbors. You can't know exactly their names and all that, it's confidential, but you can Google how far they drilled their well. Then you can get an average estimate of how far your well will be drilled, which also gives you an estimate price of what you're gonna pay. Welcome to the garden area. She did that first try. I don't know about you, but when I think off-grid and homesteading, 
all I envision it is a garden. And when we moved here, this was my dream. I was so eager to get going and to get gardening. And this is what you call the fruit of all that labor. Outside here, we have seven raised garden beds. We built them ourselves. They are made from milled six by six hemlock lumber, which is local to the area. They were super fun to build, but very challenging to fill. It took us a long time to get all these beds filled. And I have to say, when it comes to the plants, every single year it gets better and better. It's not just the garden that's growing, it's the gardener. This year, everything you see growing here, we started from seed in the end of the winter. So these things have been growing for quite a long time. And I'm gonna give you a full tour and show you everything we have. Out here we have our green bean trellis growing, cherry tomatoes, oregano, lemon cucumbers, and eggplant. And my dream for some time this summer is to actually fence in this garden. And that way we can keep animals and deer out and just have it as its own little area. This is my beloved greenhouse. I'm so excited to be in here because I haven't even been in here yet today. It's a place that both Jasmine and I love to hang out in. It's really great and it's been such a cool experience to grow outside and inside. Everything in here is just towering and so, so happy. So let's give you the rundown of what we have in here. Over here we have herbs and our giant zucchini plants, the wild tomatoes. <laughs> I can't even tame them. I try. Our peppers, which are as tall as me, and the cucumber trellis, which is growing over the dome currently. And you can check it out down here. We've got lemon cucumbers coming in. Over here in between the basil and the cucumbers, we've got these stalks of eggplant. We've got a whole slew of basil because we love pasta, pizza, and pesto around here. More tomatoes and more medicinal flowers. Oh yeah, and the nasturtiums. Also really nice and salad. You can pick these flowers and eat them. The leaves are spicy. Our goal with this greenhouse was not only to have a place to grow, but a place to hang out in. So it's really nice to call family members in here or do some yoga on the deck. Just hang out and be surrounded by green plants. You just instantly get happy when you're in here. You want to sing to your plants. <laughs> A few things to know that are very important to growing is that we have an intake fan, an outtake fan, we have electricity and water in the garden area. Thank you to Bombas for sponsoring this video. In 2013, when they launched, the founders learned that the number one most requested item at homeless shelters was socks, and they set out to solve that. And since then, they've donated over 100 million items. This is so incredible. For every one purchase, they donate one item to those in need. So not only do their socks feel really good on your feet, it also feels really good in here. I put on two different socks today so you could see what I'm wearing. These are the merino wool compression performance socks. These are the classic rib. And if you don't know, compression socks are really good for people with sore and achy legs. If you're standing for a long time or sitting for a long time, long work days, your feet deserve it. It's all in the details. There's built-in arch support, no annoying toe seams. They are designed for comfort. You can dress them up, you can dress them down. They have amazing hiking socks, compression socks, or just staying cozy. Feel good and do good with Bombas and know that your purchase is doing real good. You can get 20% off your first purchase if you're a new customer if you go to bombas.com forward slash vanwives and use code vanwives20. Off-grid looks different for everyone, but the ultimate goal for us was to be as self-sufficient as we can and less reliant on external systems. With solar power, shelter, a natural water source, and our own food sources, this means we have eliminated some bills such as a mortgage, water, and electricity bill. We chose to buy property somewhere we could afford, which meant we were anticipating renovations and building over the next few years. Another great aspect to living rurally away from cities and urban areas are lower property taxes. I think it's important to say that when we got here, we didn't have many resources at all. We didn't have much building experience or much experience living this remotely. By doing all of this ourselves, we are able to save money right now on labor. But also in the future, when something breaks, we are able to use our experience to fix or replace it ourselves as well. This is freeing. This is the outdoor shower and bath area.
It's nestled back here in the trees, surrounded by moss covered rocks. It's truly so peaceful. And you're gonna notice quite the trend out here. We like to do almost everything outside. So if I could be showering outside, that's where I'll be. And just a few steps from the outdoor shower, we have our outhouse. This was the first structure we ever built and it was the most important structure as we didn't always have an indoor bathroom. This was much quicker to put up. We started with a simple off-grid outhouse. It has an antibacterial toilet in there where we dug a very deep hole with an excavator, put a culvert in. We also built a homemade counter out of milled wood, which has a sink in there. And how do we have a sink if this is an outdoor outhouse? We collect rainwater off of our roof, which then goes into a barrel, and we use a foot pump to wash our hands. Having the outhouse also acts as a second bathroom when we have guests. There's nothing worse than having to go to the bathroom and someone is in there for too long. What I love about the classic outhouse is that it is so reliable. You can always count on it and I really do think ours is pretty cute. I think anyone could use it. Scared you too, eh? Sorry, buddy. This is our 11 cord woodshed. And yes, we have a lot of wood. That's because when we first moved to the cabin, our only heat source was a wood stove. We still use it, we love it. There's nothing like wood heat. And in Canada, you have to dry out your wood for at least a year before you use it. Hence why it is stored in the beautiful solar area getting dry for the next year. We probably have enough wood for like 2027, but I don't think you can ever have too much wood. Our wood situation didn't always look this pretty. We would store it under tarps. We would store it on crates, anything that we could do to be prepared for the winter. However, last November, we built this beautiful woodshed and thanks to the internet of everyone teaching everyone what they do, we now store our wood in IBC totes. They store about a cord of wood, three fourths to be exact, which makes it super easy to bring all of that directly to our cabin with the tractor forks. Winter has never been easier. It's quite a few frogs out here today. Our local friends. Local friends. When we started looking for our property, it was really important for us to be near some sort of body of water. And here, fortunately, we have a river and a lake. It is a really nice place to relax. It's a great place to fish if you enjoy that. And we have got so much use out of this lake and this river over the last few years. In fact, when we didn't have a shower, we would come down here after a long day of building and cool off. And this really was how we got clean for a long time. This lake is really quiet. There's no motors on it and there's hardly anyone out here ever. You'll see tons of beavers swimming around and it's very, very, very healthy. We've got turtles and fish and you really feel like you're way out in the wild when you're standing by the lake here. It gives you such a nice feeling. There's something that it does to your soul when you're in or around the water. The lake is about a hop, skip and a jump from the cabin. Although we're nestled way back there, we do come down here almost every day. Now that we're established at the cabin, coming down here, building a dock and making this like our second playground is top priority. So come take a look at what we've been building this summer and you'll quickly understand why we love it so much. The dock was extremely fun to build, but after that, we built ourselves a floating tiny cabin. We take this out on the lake, we go camping, we sleep in the cots underneath the moonlight, and we wake up and dive into the water. And there is nothing cooler than being way out there in the middle of the water, just enjoying lake life. Welcome to the floating cabin. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so we've got two cots. We have our trolling motor, which is how we get out to the middle of the lake. Uh, we've got a solar panel that charges everything and keeps everything going in here, charges our battery. And our fridge keeps our phones charged, speaker, fan, and that's really it. A couple windows for a cross breeze. The simple life. The simple life. Of course, we need a way to cook if we have a fridge. So we've got ourselves a little barbecue, which is really nice to grill up some sausages. When you're out there, oh my gosh, I could go for one right now, actually. This is our dining area where we enjoy meals, play cards, and the benches are storage for life jackets, utensils, everything that we could need. Paddles. Paddles. We're forgetting about the most important part. Yes, it is a pirate ship after all. Ahoy, mate. We fly our flag high out here. <laughs> and lastly, the captain's chair. 
You're probably wondering, how does this float? Well, us engineers did a lot of math. And of course, all of this on top looks super aesthetic, and fun, but we wouldn't have any of it if we didn't build our foundation properly. We built a very strong foundation with joists, leg screws, carriage bolts, and floats that can hold up to 4,800 pounds. So that means we can add all the passengers, food, beverages, and still sail on out there. We're moving! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, this is amazing, everyone! It's the perfect pace. Oh my god, it's so sick! We came to these woods to experience the benefits of nature as often as we can. To wake up to the sun, to stroll through the grass, dive into the lakes, to be surrounded by fresh air and natural sounds. We've always been drawn to the peace of the forest. Being in nature is a great way to simplify your life and increase your well-being. Living out here allows us to be more connected to the process and to slow down. This is the real reason why we live out here. First, thank you all so much for shopping the pack year. We're so thankful for your support. And if you missed last week's video, we have merch for sale. Yeah. And it's for sale until August 30th. And then it's gone forever as it is a limited time exclusive drop. Yes, so, so get your merch while you can. <laughs> if you go to vanwives.com, you'll be right at our website. However, if you also just scroll down on this video, we have our entire shop open up right there. On YouTube. Easy peasy. Lime right under the video, you can choose your sweater or your t-shirt or your hat. And it'll bring you to the website. Yes. Making it simple. August 30th, we have t-shirts, hoodies, zips, and hats. And they're all super high quality. Everyone really loved the quality last time, so we went with the same style. And we hope you love it. We can't wait to see you in it. Send us your photos. And again, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. Enjoy the tour. When we first arrived at the cabin, this entire area was so grown up, you could hardly even see it. So part of the fun of getting it all tamed back was actually curating the entire front entrance ourselves. Slowly over time, we learned how to use power tools, an excavator, landscaping tools, and we were able to get creative and curate our front entrance to be exactly as we wish. We found rocks while excavating the yard and decided to build giant flower garden beds at the front of our cabin. And that led us to building a boardwalk and stairs as well as a tree trunk path to the front. These plants started really small and over the years they've matured and bloomed into these gorgeous wild flower gardens. We love them and it just attracts all of the pollinators and it's such a nice feature. I'm so glad we started when we did because they're giant now. The inspiration for this garden started when I was very young, five years old. I used to sit on big boulders in my uncle's backyard and stare at his lilies. And now I have some of my very own. When we first got here, we had no idea what to expect with the cabin. And the reality was, is that the exterior, both the siding and the roof were in really rough condition. Our first priorities were to get this cabin watertight and ready for everything that the Canadian weather was gonna throw at us, including winter. For the first time in our lives, we are gonna lay a roof. It was a very challenging experience. The two of us put new metal on this cabin and save the cabin from what would have been otherwise probably dilapidated nothing within a few years. When we first got here, our cabin was blue dried out plywood siding. <laughs> it kind of looked like a beach house in the middle of the woods. Since then, we've tackled the exterior of the cabin entirely on our own by laying a blue skin underlayment and then putting on the siding piece by piece. Blue skin is a sticky self-adhesive waterproof membrane that you put on under your siding. For the siding, we chose something very cool and unique. This is Susugi Ban charred cedar siding from our friends at Blackwood Siding. It's a technique where you char the wood to be completely completely black and that makes it mold and rot resistant, waterproof and even fire resistant. Not only is the siding super practical because it can last over a hundred years, yes you heard that right, but it's also such a vibe, it keeps the cabin feel. Welcome to the inside of the cabin. This is our 600 square foot tiny cabin and I'm so excited to be bringing you inside because the last time we did a tour on our channel, it was 
ages ago and it was purple in here and there was insulation everywhere and it was dusty and full of tools and now it's a home that's complete and I can't wait to show you around. This is my favorite room, the kitchen. When you first walk in the cabin, you'll notice that it is one open area. The kitchen and the living room are connected and for that reason, we wanted to keep it as spacious and bright as we possibly could. Everything is completely custom. We designed it ourselves and that's why we chose nice light woods and white counters, bright light, big windows because it makes the small space feel bigger than it is. For our kitchen, we wanted to keep a flow and keep it spacious in here. So we have an island with two chairs so we can eat dinner here, tons of storage underneath, and the sink right in the middle of the room. Because we don't have a dining table, we decided to go with a window dining table, which is such a fun way to eat our meals in both the summer and the winter sometimes. We will open it up and eat here. We love to cook and we love to host, so having this space was really important to us. And lastly, this window behind me is one of my favorites because in the winter, the coniferous trees are covered in snow. And if you could just picture it with the kettle going, it is just the picture perfect moment. I love it. This is one of our two bedrooms, the spare room. Because we have a small space, we decided to design this room to be multi-purpose. Guests can sleep in the Murphy bed and we can work out in this room and do laundry. We have the most simple layout. So as soon as you leave the spare room, this is the bathroom. <laughs> the best part about this bathroom is we have a full size shower. <laughs> With a rubber ducky. With a rubber ducky. It's amazing. This is one of the best things that we've ever installed. It is so nice to get clean after having a long work day, especially in the winter. Not having to shower outside and be able to shower inside with hot water is the dream. And yes, everyone, we used to shower outside with a hot water hose. We did. We have a simple toilet. It's basically a glorified bucket. This counter is also identical to our kitchen counters. It's quartz. And we actually got this as an off cut. You can ask the people at the factory and sometimes they have really good deals in the back. This is a concrete above counter sink and a vessel faucet to go along with our big, beautiful mirror that hides all of the goodies inside. Check it out. So much stuff. Yeah. Bathrooms aren't just what you see on the outside. The reality is, is that behind the walls and under the floor, there is so much waterproofing and detail that matter so much. We did tile floors in here ourselves for the first time ever and 100% 10 of the time would do it again. It was awesome and I think they just look so good. This bathroom is really small and because we don't have a window and we only have one small fan, we did red guard the entire thing with three layers before we did anything because bathrooms have a lot of moisture. Up there is our triangle attic. We turned it into an additional space to sleep. We built this cute little ladder to get up there and it can sleep too. You gotta be a little agile to get up and down. The last room is over here, which is our room. Welcome to our bedroom, y'all. It is just a bedroom. It's a simple bedroom. Couple cool things, the bed. We built it completely on our own. I love it. I think it really complements the space so much. We've got a mirror, a closet, a dresser, but most importantly, we installed a giant patio window. So when I'm sleeping right here, I can look outside at the stars at night and wake up to the beautiful sunrise. So this is really something that we did not want to compromise on. You all know that our house is inside outside vibes. We've said that time and time again. This is a complete reflection of that. I'm very proud of this pathos. I know they're easy to grow, but just look at her. She started off as just a baby and now she's crawling down to my head. When we arrived here, it looked like this. We wanted to start with a clean slate, no unsolved mysteries under the walls. We cleared out the cabin, ripped back the walls, removed out the old insulation and all the cobwebs. The next step was to wire the cabin and insulate it. The living room! <laughs> a comfy couch is goals. I don't know how you got off of it. I don't know how I did either. Over here, we have a simple seating area. There's not a whole lot of room in our living room. So the point of our living space is to sit here to stare at the wood stove and the fire blazing in the winter. But more importantly, Bella's toys. Thanks for showing my toys, moms. 
After searching for many months across the entire country on MLS listings, we saw aerial footage of the land and the privacy sold us. We bought this land through a few phone calls and we had never seen it in real life before the purchase. What did we just do? That's what happens when you buy blind, everyone. <sighs> Holy smokes. We definitely, yeah. Doesn't look like this on the Remax page. In fact, we had never even been to the East Coast at all. East Coast of Canada, where we will be on the Atlantic Ocean for the first time in our lives. We will be hitting our destination of Nova Scotia. Our best advice is to look long and far and outside of where you imagine yourself settling, as we definitely did not expect to be here, but we are so grateful we are. Once again, we prioritized the outside inside. So what was once a closed off small living room now has the entire world brought inside through all four seasons. It is a spectacular place to sit and observe. Welcome to the basketball court. Kidding, the deck and basketball court. As you can see, <laughs> this is a 16 by 32 foot deck. Pretty big, I have to say. And like everything, it's because we live outside. It's one of my favorite builds to date. Anytime anyone needs a deck built, I'm your girl. From day one, when we moved to the cabin, we looked out that small little window that came with the cabin and said, we will be building a deck right there. And then maybe you can get up to the deck one day here and it'll be a nice living inside, outside area. Not only is this the perfect spot for a deck because you have the rooms that you're coming out of, but you also have the south facing exposure, giving us beautiful sunshine all day and even night long. It is my favorite place and where we probably spend most of our time. And over here, we have our big comfy chairs, a propane fireplace so I can eat all my hot dogs and marshmallows and be happy camper. And then we have the grilling station over there, barbecue and a wood fired pizza oven. When you live this far from anything, you gotta have a way to make pizza, you know? Now we have a 12 by 34 foot workshop. We were in here earlier. You saw the battery house. Welcome to where we store all of our tools now. And I have to say, it's better than in the house. Yes, it might be a little messy. And by a little messy, I mean a lot messy. I know where everything is, so don't worry. And I'm sure everyone else has a garage like this too where you know where everything is, but it probably looks like a tornado hit it. This building was just a shell. We insulated it, wired it, put up the plywood walls and ceiling, and built everything in here, from the workbench to the chainsaw shelf. Just like our cabin, the workshop is also heated three different ways, propane, wood stove, heat pump, and that's because our off-grid system needs to maintain a certain temperature. So that's why it made sense to put the off-grid system in here because we were going to probably heat this building anyways, and then we're not heating double the buildings. So yes, there's a lot of stuff in here, but it's all useful. We use it every single day, every single week. And over the years, we have accumulated more tools as we've taken on bigger jobs day after day, week after week. We also have a deep freezer back there, which helps with our gardening haul so we can freeze vegetables and eat them in the winter. And just because it's extremely satisfying, I'd love to show you the time that we gave this place a complete overhaul and it looked nice and clean. Welcome to the Garage Makeover Tour. If you've been around here for a little while, you'll know that this driveway was a swamp. Getting down here was a feat. And now we have this beautiful driveway we built. The two of us decided to rent an excavator and do it completely on our own. It was super fun and super rewarding. Every day that I walk down here, I am so grateful for this solid ground. To make the driveway the best we could, we started the base with a geotextile fabric, started with large stone and worked our way to smaller stone, and then a crusher class A fine material, which allows this driveway to withstand even the toughest of winters, plows and rains. It's been three years and it looks amazing. I'm gonna put a map up of our land for all of you to better visualize where we are in the land. This road is a project we just finished. We spent the better part of a week using the excavator to give us full access to the back part of our property. Of 
Clementine Drive. Naturally, we had to name the new road after Clementine. Clementine Drive. But we have made it to the end of the road, and now we are at our two-story sawmill bunkie in the woods. So right now, we are behind the cabin, right there. And then we started where the black truck is, down there, and looped ourselves all the way around. This sawmill bunkie brought me back to my childhood building it. It is like Lincoln Logs, if you are familiar with it. This is my new girlfriend, Clem and Jazz. We spend every waking moment together. I love her so much. Not only has she helped me move everything, but she's also saved my partner's back as well as my own back and just helped with life out here in the woods. If I could have gone back and bought Clementine year one, I would have. The best investment and purchase we have ever made. We actually bought Clementine used off a friend, new to us, but she's got 2,000 hours, which is a well-broken in tractor, but she will still dig my grave. Clementine is a B26 Kubota, and not only does she help in the summer months, but also in the winter. We live on an unmaintained road, meaning we are responsible for our entire road, which is kilometers long, and our driveway is 325 feet long. So having Clementine be, being able to plow helps us leave the cabin. She has forks, a bucket, and a backhoe, and deserves the world. That is why an upcoming project is starting for her, a nice enclosed workshop for her, where she can be away from all of the elements, including the sun, because it's worrying at her tires. Everyone, hashtag Clementine in the comments. Everyone loves her. Oh my darling, oh, oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling Clementine. Clementine. Relaxation Nation over here. Nice and close to the cabin, we put a spa area out here in the woods and a lot of people love it. A lot of people think it is so wild, but let me tell you from a hard working gal, the two of us are working long, hard, strenuous days. And being able to have a place to retreat to and to relax really allows us to come back even harder the next day and come out more creative. Rest is so important. And so over here, we did a wood chip ground and we planted beautiful plants all the way around, nestled right underneath the trees with just enough space to see the stars. You can find us in the hot tub, in the sauna, or in the cold plunge. We also built a shower so that way you can rinse off before you get in or out of the hot tub, a place to take a seat and hang your towel. And I'm sure you've noticed the IBC tote full of firewood that Clementine graciously brought over to the spa. And that's because the hot tub and the sauna are wood fired. This is an off grid spa. Surprise, surprise! This is the abandoned cabin down by the lake. This cabin has been exposed to major flooding and major water damage. There's a whole lot of mice and it is not a pretty sight. We've put in tons of work to get it back to its bones. Come join us, subscribe, follow this journey as we bring this cabin back to life. <laughs>